and we are live yo episode 78 of menace and the man so one thing i've been thinking about is my last cameo i did like they kind of wanted me to like roast one of the guys they were i'm like man we gotta put that out there if you hit up the menace and the man for a cameo we will burn whoever you want burned like to the ground Oh. Burn the mother right down bad. That's what you're going to start doing? Oh, I, I have a, Like, when they're like, yo, roast my friend. I'm like, oh, yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm digging in deep. It's like, I can, I can crush motivational speeches, but I need to, like, I need the right setting. I need the, the lighting's got to be right. I got to be, like, mentally prepared to give it. Yeah. You know? I put a lot into my cameos. I've seen you out there putting a lot into it's your cameras. It's not like I'm just like, hey, yo, Matt, what's up? Happy birthday, man. How's it going? I'm like, all right. It's my Matt. He lives in Arizona. What does he do? Okay, he wrestles. Okay. When, like, one time I got a hockey stick out. I fucking shot a goddamn hockey puck for a cameo. Like, look, don't put down the stick. Like, keep going. You're going hard in the paint on your cameos. Yeah. That's what people like about you. Yeah. That's what people like about you. Man. So I sent Chell the link. Chell should be joining us in a moment. You know who else? I was trying Tatiana Suarez for this week, and she just like she maybe I don't think she's good with phones. Period. Or she's just like one of those. You know what I mean? If you want, I could take it over, Stan. Yeah. Well, no, I got her number, hit her up, and crickets. But she respond like, and then usually when I go back and forth with her on. Uh, Instagram, it's usually like a delayed response. No, delayed response. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, one of those. But yeah. Well, the thing is, there's, there's, right? You meet certain people, you have a conversation with them, whatever. Maybe you exchange numbers, but like you don't save everybody's number in your phone. No, I've been running into that problem. Is I'll go and like when they come up on your phone and it's not someone you have saved, you're like. Ah, how the f- I'll get back to him later. How the fuck did you get my number? Yeah, or like, I'll get back to him later. And like, you never do because when I'm saving your phone, you're not going to memorize their goddamn number. This is true. But yeah, you know who else? We're, we were just talking before we started about people that we need to get on. And we said Jason Ellis, Mayhem. We got to get your boy Kush on. Oh, yeah. Bro, like, you see the shit now? Like, Conor, Conor McGregor is the number one contender. At 170. 170? Ali said, so pretty much I think negotiations went south with the Usman versus Masvidal fight is what I'm seeing. Apparently, uh, Dana White, I don't know the, the truth to it, but Dana White came out or a report came out that said that Dana White said that Usman said he wants $3.5 million guaranteed to fight during the quarantine. So he wants, I guess, $3.5 million guaranteed to fight Usman, I mean uh, Masvidal. So... That fight's been off the table. Then you saw Dana saying, obviously, there was something else for, what you'll call it, something else for Masvidal on the table. Something interesting, as he put. On the Menace and the Man show. Yeah. 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 I don't ah. know. It's saying our stream is having trouble playing this video. Let me figure that out. But then, so now Ali came out and said, uh, Conor McGregor, you want a title shot at 170? And so that's pretty much like if Conor goes public and says yes, I think UFC is kind of forced there. No? Yeah. So. Now, because if Conor, is it because if Conor fights, like, okay, we can guarantee you, it's easy to give you 3.5. But giving you 3.5 against Masvidal. Yeah. It won't be as easy. Um, I think like we won't make as much profit. Yeah. I think that's, di- you know, I think that fight makes money, though. I think uh, Masvidal is right now a moneymaker. And then uh, yeah. I'm, I'm seeing people kind of throw shade at, what's his name? Usman. And say, like, when has, I saw, like, uh, Malki Kawa, uh, Abraham Kawa say, when's the last champion you can remember that uh, couldn't draw money? And I'm assuming they're talking about 
Usman. What? Yeah, they're saying he can't draw money. He's always the main event when he fights, right? Yeah, but then the question is, do those pay-per-views sell? You know what I mean? The th- I don't know. Like, the thing is, is like, I feel like the UFC can make you a seller. Uh, yeah, but at the same time, if people aren't buying the pay-per-views, even when they try, then I think, uh... Usman's not a boring fighter. No, not at all. Let me see. For some reason, it's not even letting me adjust the key right now. Adjust what key? All right, hold on. I don't know what you're talking about, but... Up. So another person I want to get in the show, sorry, excuse my yawn, is um, Ross Pearson. Hold on, I'm, I'm adjusting some shit. We got Chael in our waiting room right now. You got Chael in the waiting room? Yeah, but I got to get the stream back up. Give me a second. Oh, Lord. What, what are you on Facebook? Yep. Why don't you fuck Facebook? Oh, my God. Why is this thing being such a dick right now? You go back to Twitch. Bro, this thing's being a real douchebag right now. Oh, if you blow this, Chael will never come back on our show. Yeah, well. If you blow this right now, if you, if you say, hey, Chael, I know we told you five. I know we told you 515. And now, hey, got to cancel on you. Bro, so, so you tell me what do I do right now. We'll not pick the stream back up. I have no idea. I'm more of a Twitch guy. Are you? All right, we go. Now it's back up. Are we live? We are live, yeah. Now, are you going to be able to take what we just said before and. Yeah, piece it all together and whatnot? Yeah. Oh! 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 Chael Sonnen, welcome back to Menace and the Man. Is he in? Yeah, it says con- up, connecting audio. What's up, man? You look like you're in the lab right now, Chael. Yeah, I went upstairs. I got the kids downstairs behaving like maniacs. Oh, yeah. Love it. Love it. It's the way it goes, right? Yeah, well, you got it like in my head. Like, I, I like when, you know, I have like my lady over, whatever, like, or my dad's like, your kids are being wild. But, like, listen, they need a window. To be wild. Yeah. But if you have them act like saints all the time, it's not real. What kind of life is that? I'm with you. Yeah. Well, Chael said one of the best lines last time he was on. is like, I got two little terrorists at home. And all they do, all, all they do is break shit. Every day. Every day they break something. Every single day. I got to come home and fix something. <laughs> but you have a girl, right? Yeah. We haven't started. Have we started? Am I being out of character? No. Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah, we're live right now, so you can go do oh. whatever you want. Oh, by the way, Dennis, <laughs> I must tell you, that's a fantastic haircut you got. I hope you tip that guy. You're looking great, buddy. My lady did it. Did she? Yeah, I pay her with kisses. What do you mean, by the way? What do you mean do I got a girl? I'm a very handsome man. Of course I have a girl, okay? All right. Always. That's a That's a quarantine cut right there. No, I'm talking about a daughter. You silly goose. Oh, my God. I'm embarrassed. I have a daughter <laughs> and a son. Yes. Yeah. And a super you see, you're the way your kids are things. things. Yeah, she breaks stuff, you know, but it's really weird stuff. That's like she'll get on her hands and knees and then she'll, she'll like the door stopper that goes ding, ding, ding. She'll like pull that off the wall. Like stuff like this. Like, oh, God. Hadn't even thought of that. Would have locked it up. Hadn't thought of that one. <laughs> Now, are you handy? Like, you're able to fix anything they break? I can fix most of it, yeah. Yeah, I grew up in construction. So, yeah, I mean, I, I could probably build a house if I needed to, yeah. Okay. Wow. S- same thing with Stan, not not the menace. Yeah. <laughs> well, I could, but just, it, might, it, it, it will work. It just won't be awesome. Sure. Might yeah. not look right, right, right. And, and aesthetics are important. Man, yeah, I'm really bad with that. Menace would make like a good sight foreman or something, though. He's good for like motivation. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah no, he can crack the whip. I agree with you on that. Keep yeah. going. Fix that. No, not like that. Where's your tools? You need lunch. <laughs> I'm good there. Oh, he, Boom, he, 
He he's very good with the lunch. Like whenever I've done work with him, that's the number one thing. Every five minutes, you want to eat? You hungry? You ready to go? What do you need? He's good with that. All my guys are fed beers, whatever they need, water. Got them. So what are you guys talking about over here today? What do you think about this Masvidal business? Masvidal and Usman aren't going to fight? That can't be right. That sounds weird. That's what we were just talking about. Then we had a little technical difficulty, but we figured that out. But yeah, uh, I don't know. Did you see the report, Chael? Dana supposedly said that Usman said he wants $3.5 million guaranteed. Well, I did not see that Dana came out and said that number. That, that's a little lofty. Yeah, he's that's what he wants guaranteed to fight during the quarantine. And then I saw you one of your posts because I'm obviously subscribed to the bad guy Inc. Chael Sonnen. Um, Conor McGregor is the number one contender right now by default. Sure, I agree with that. I agree with that. I mean, Conor did dip his toe into that weight class. He beat Cowboy. Cowboy was ranked in the top ten at the time. It took him twenty seconds, and it's hard to act like Conor's not in there somewhere. And then yeah. when you start moving the other pieces on the board, you know, you got Leon Edwards can't get into the country. You got Tyron Woodley is busy this weekend with Gilbert Burns. You've got uh, Masvidal saying no to the number one contendership, rumored to be going after Diaz. Colby Covington is, I, I just haven't heard what's going on. I don't know if he's sick or hurt or waiting for somebody. I mean, just by process of elimination, Connor starts to look better and better. Yeah, and I have constant alerts. I had an alert yesterday that said Colby Covington is actually off of the American top team roster. I heard that too. You know, I hope that isn't true. I didn't follow up with them to find out, but I, I tend to think where there's smoke, there's fire. You know, in this sport, there always is. Whenever you hear a rumor, it's usually a, a report. It turns out to be true. And that would be a tough one because he's in Florida. I don't know how much his roots are in Florida. If he's seeing a gal, by example, something along these lines, but he can't go over to the Black Zillions. That's Kamara's team. And so then it comes, you know, where are you going to go? Is he going to go out to Colorado? Some great teams out there. Is he going to come back home? Uh, join back up with us. I, I don't know, I, but I am I am curious about that. You know, when you lose a gym and you got a new environment, it's a big deal. Yeah, that's what I'm seeing. A lot of people say is that that's what they think is the fit's going to be right back there in Oregon. Yeah, no, we'll see. I mean, that might be the answer. There's some good guys out here. Austin Vanderfort comes to mind. I mean, there's yeah. similar weight classes. Uh, yeah, I know Chris Weidman and and Ally Quinn took to social media and invited him to come join. Longo Sarah, so you know maybe he'll look around a little bit. One thing about Colby, he is not afraid to get in his car and drive. I mean, that guy did that in college. He went to junior college in Iowa, then he came back to finish up at Oregon State, jumped right in the car, and and headed out to Florida for his MMA career. So he's not afraid to pack up and move. It's not, that's something that would bother me. I kind of like to be in the same place. It doesn't bother him. That, that's exciting for him. So I, I'm looking forward to seeing where he's going, but I look forward to hearing the drama behind it as well. Yeah, that's hey, what I'm going to say. I don't think Long Island would be an awful fit for Colby. I agree. I agree. The guys that they got on that team right now, man, they got a, a close knit group. They got a lot of knowledge, a lot of connections. I could. Oh, yeah. yeah. And they would all gain from it. I'd worry about size, though. There's not, like, we we saw it with LaFlair when LaFlair had to go to Florida to get his rounds oh, yeah. in. There's not a lot of 170s. There's pretty much Weidman at 185, but Weidman can go with, like, 205ers and heavyweights. So what, Colby, yeah, I, Colby be the I, big guy. Yeah, he might have to bring somebody in. Then, if, if my memory is correct, he and Matt Sarah have some heat. But you know, maybe those guys worked it out. I don't know. I'm just saying. You know, if you got a free agent like Colby Covington that's looking for a home and you're running a gym, I would think you would want to reach out. Yeah, it's easy to get some heat with Matt Sarah, though. Yeah, that's real easy, right? Yeah, yeah. You you want to you insult Matt? He's coming back at you. Don't make any mistake about that. I know Matt in passing. I went up to him one time at an event. I was like, oh, I do the show with Bermudez. We got to get you on the show. He was like, all right, cool. So then I was like, how about Tuesday? He was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I didn't say I was coming on yet. How about this? And he got like an attitude. He's like, you tell Bermudez to hit me up and then I'll come on the show. Then he went up to, then he went up to Dennis and was like, yo, your boy, you got to check your boy. Yeah, you got to check your boy. He comes up to me, says I do a show. You got to come on Tuesday. He's like, whoa. And I was like, ah. Uh. Because I'll tell you what, Stan, sometimes he gets a few bases going. Yeah. And he can come off like a little more aggressive, you know? But that's what Stan's got to do. I mean, if you're booking guests, you got to make that ask, right? You know what? I've invited Sarah on my show a couple times. He won't even respond. I've known him over a decade. He won't even respond. Really? I've gone on his show twice. And both times that he asks, I get back to him like that, trying to set an example for him. Nothing. Uh, Radio silent. Almost like he's got my phone number blocked. It's actually kind of funny. I hope he continues to ignore me just so I can continue to tell this story. 
<laughs> <laughs> well we have a segment because sometimes uh like we've been going back for the gregor getting gregor on he came on one time on the phone he had to go we tricked him quick, but like, we'll like we'll end up we'll end the episode like all right and uh uh we didn't have time for gregor we're uh we'll get him next time and we're sure. ending every show with that <laughs> that's great yeah like uh i got it. matt damon or jimmy kimmel did it to matt damon is where it comes from you ever see that shale no, I don't see that one. Those guys got a funny relationship, though. Well, he did like 50 episodes, and at the end of every episode, he was like, everybody, sorry, Matt Damon, we ran out of time, maybe next week. And he ended like 50 <laughs> episodes. Then one episode, Matt Damon showed up and was like, why do you keep doing this every week? Why are you doing this to me? That's and funny. That's funny. Look, if there's ever proof that if you dream of being on TV and anybody can make it, it's Jimmy Kimmel. Oh, yeah. He's Hollywood, that guy. What's his That's story? Got, the guy's got a face for radio, and he's anything but funny, and he's got his own comedy show. I mean, in all, all due yeah. respect, whatever his mother had to do or what he had to do behind the scenes, <laughs> my goodness, he got it done, didn't he? I mean, you have your talk show, but I could see you doing something like that, like some late-night comedy TV. Jimmy Kimmel is doing I think you could see anybody doing it. I got a horse. <laughs> that, that my neighbor's horse could go do it. Yeah, but I could see Late Night with Chael Sonnen. Sure. Yeah. Sure, let's do it. All right, we got to talk to NBC and ABC about that one. But I even don't think so. I mean, if Matt Damon can get past their low rent security, why don't we just go bump the set and tell Jimmy he's off tonight? It, it, it seems like that that door is a little bit open, isn't it? Oh yeah. Hey, and the, our whole thing is, what's he gonna do? Beat us up? That's what I'm saying. I mean, I, if Matt Damon could slip past them, yeah, I think that uh, Bermudis and Chael will probably be on that couch. Oh, we'll slide right in there. Oh, we should we'll walk. Hey, Jimmy, that. take the night. T- take your shoes for a walk, Jimmy. Go out. Go out and get yourself a tattoo. Make it a night to remember. We got this one. We should work on this. So, what we were talking about before, before we went into the Colby Matt Damon. No one knows. No, no we... one knows what we were talking about. This is this is the show about nothing. Look how far Seinfeld got with it. Yeah, well, that's pretty much what this show is. So, no. like. The way you make those great segments and you'll have like a five minute block where you're talking about one thing. Me and Dennis try so hard to make those like we'll spend five minutes talking about Khabib Gaethje and then we go off. And then before you know it, we're talking about zebras and yeah. Australia. It always takes you in some other direction. Well, you know, 170, I'll, I'll tell you, I mean, we we're kind of talking about 170, but that is a lot of moving doors right now. Is Connor the number one contender? I understand the people that's going to say he's not, but if you listen to the logic of how he became the number one guy, I mean, there's an argument that whether you like it or not, there's still a discussion. And uh, I'll tell you what else. Hey, Dennis, you, are you following this Gilbert Burns guy? And the reason I say that is he's won seven of his last eight over two different weight classes, and a lot of people don't know who he is. That's a hard fight for anybody. I think that yeah. this fight with he and Tyron is a, is a lot more competitive than maybe the odds makers know. Oh, yeah. Doreen, oh, he's, he's a regular on the show, Doreen. Gilbert is one of my boys. I was training with him, I don't know, six years ago. I was going down the Black Zillions, and uh, he gave he, had, he was actually like, holy shit, man. Because I actually knew about Gilbert before Gilbert knew about me. And uh, he was like, dude, his ground pounding, I couldn't submit him. It talked about me. Like, my pressure gets the wall. And then he, he was still – his stand-up was still a little – it was just very, very wild. But it was very scary. You know, I was just like, bang, you know? And then I just watched him progress over this these fights. I'm like, holy shit. So the UFC did a promo today. I wrote goosebumps. I'm like, dude, because that's all very real. He's a problem oh, yeah. everywhere. Oh, yeah. No, this guy this guy can squabble. And a lot of people, you know, when you're Tyron Woodley and you're this big star, you're champion of the world, people expect a lot of things for you. It's a very unfair situation as far as your approach goes. And it, and it seems that I keep reading things like, uh, oh, Tyrant should win this. Who's Gilbert Burns? Like, no, I mean, you guys don't know who Gilbert Burns is. That's on you. If you're not paying attention to a guy that won seven of his last eight, that's on you. Yeah. And it's not like he's winning them, like, decisions. He's knocking people out. He's submitting them. He's taking people down. He's, like, he's beating – he's tapping – or he's knocking out the best grapplers – and he's knocking out some of the best strikers. Yep. Oh, and even people. going to be a problem. Like he knocked out Damian Maya, and then everyone's now going, oh, Damian Maya's old. Damian Maya had his back in that fight. Col- Gilbert got out. Gilbert scrambled twice and got out, got out of the situation yeah. that everyone else was done in. You know, everyone else was checkmate there. Yeah. All in the first round, you know, I mean, these are all talking points. Uh, Tyron Woodley is something very special, but, but I think the talking points are relevant. Look, this is a short notice fight. 
this is a five round fight. Tyron hasn't been in there in a period of time. I, I want to say it's a year, roughly, maybe even a little bit more. Was it March of last year or May? But I mean, you get my point right around a year. And then you look at Gilbert. This guy's gone through three or four training camps. Plus, he's secretly doing grappling events every chance he gets. I mean, this guy shakes hands and competes under the lights every five and six times a year. He's a very active guy. Yeah. Stan, what do we got in the odds on that fight? I think it's close, but I think uh, Woodley's a favorite. I'll double check it right oh, now. I, I'll, I, I like Gilbert all day because, like you know, Tyron is is a he's a fucking amazing athlete. But I think he has his hands on a lot of different things. Age is not on his side. Whereas Gilbert Burns has just been like going, going, grappling here, grappling here. You know, Tyron's doing a movie here, a rap song here, an appearance here. Gilbert's hungry, man. What? Hang on. Every time someone pulls out, he's the first guy. Put me in. I'm ready. I'll come right now. Yep. And particularly, Dennis, particularly him changing weight classes has really allowed him to mean that. Like, you know, when he doesn't have yeah. to beat the scale, it's like, I'm ready. He's all, yeah. he's never not grappling somewhere or fighting somewhere. He's got something going every single month. The guy's really incredible. They're also very similar. You know, you've got Gilbert, who's a world medalist in Abu Dhabi for grappling. But Tyron was a two-time All-American in wrestling. And, but they both like to come right here. And Tyron's a little bit more uh, exact, and I think that uh, Gilbert does qualify, as you were saying, Dennis, is, is a little loopy. But if you're loopy, but you got power, who gives a damn? Those are the right. hardest guys to fight. Guys that are throwing stuff at angles you're not used to, but they got power. Those guys are a problem, man. Gilbert's a problem. Yeah, they yeah. got they got Woodley as the favorite, 180. So Bur yeah, that's Bur close. That's fairly close. Burns is a plus 155 underdog. Because the thing is, is Tyron's gonna have to meet because. Gilbert's going to come forward. I can see Gilbert or, or uh, Woodley kind of backing up, backing up, backing up, waiting for his shot. But they're going to be in the small octagon, too. Oh, that's right. That helps Gilbert out, I think. Yeah. Because we've seen Woodley enough that you know Woodley's game plan. Woodley does that. Woodley's a counter puncher. He does that circle in, and he just tries to like load up that right hand, that little three-piece combination he throws. Gilbert's yeah. probably going to be stalking him in this fight. Yeah, but Gilbert's not going to take him down. I, I like. I mean, I don't think he takes him down. Like, hey, high crotch takedown. I don't think that's a real thing. No. He had. He'd have to get him loopy, and then you know something like that. I don't think he yeah. can just grab him and throw him down, which is why Tyrone was a champion in the first place. And I read a lot of people saying they really think that Gilbert's going to submit him and submit him fast. I think that's a stretch. You know, I mean, Tyron hasn't even been close to being submitted. Damian Maya never even got close. He really knows those positions, understands them well. So I, I think it comes down – I mean, I'm just making a prediction, but I think the intangibles do matter. I think the fact that it's a five-round fight and Tyron's been out there for – has not been in there for a little bit. But also remind you, Tyron does some of his best work when he's the underdog. And Dennis, as you know, there's something about that approach in athletes. Some athletes want to be the big favorite and everybody believes them, but some other athletes want to stick it to everybody, and they love when there's no pressure on them. Even look at Tyron's career, underdog against uh, Wonderboy, underdog the second time against Underboy, underdog against Maya, two to one under, two and a half to one underdog against Till. You remember the hype that Till was coming in right, with? Those right. were his best fights. He, he actually went into the Usman fight as a favorite, kind of affected his approach. And I think also that was Usman's coming out party, though, that fight. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, for right. sure. Um, but, I mean, it's way easier. We, we talk about this all the time for um, Gilbert to get ready to fight Woodley than it is for Woodley to prepare for for Gilbert. You know what I mean? In terms of, yeah. like, like, stats and, like, ranking and, you know, Woodley's already been the champion. Sure. You know I mean? So it's. And nobody knows who Gilbert is. So I was just like, man, I've been watching Woodley for a very long time, and now he's right in front of me where, you know, Burns probably wasn't even on Woodley's radar for some time. Yeah. No, uh, Burns is the dark horse. I mean, Burns' whole life can change, you know, and for however long it changes. Right? It's just a window. But, I mean, his whole trajectory is going to be different if he gets to jump on, on Tyron. I don't even know that I'm willing to predict that he's going to. I'm just sharing with you. He can, and it surprises me how few people realize he can. Gilbert Burns is fantastic, but for some reason is still breaking through in terms of name recognition. Yeah. You know what? You know how we pick fights here, Chael? Tell have, me. Have you been on the show yet? 
All right, we're going with I've you. I've done your show, but not for the prediction part. No, I'm saying uh, that's how we pick fights. So if you've been on Menace and the Man, oh. we're going with you. <laughs> we, hey, we're rocking with you. Respect. I love it. It's as good a system as any. Yeah, like hey. Woodley too. Menace has hit up Woodley, and it'll be like a conversation. So something that guys do sometimes, they'll entertain the conversation. Like, oh, what's up? Hey, blah, 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 back and forth. And then you go, hey, you want to come on the show? Flat lines. Crickets. <laughs> sure. Then sure. Chill, you know what I do? I do the the cricket emojis, three of them. <laughs> and hey, and you get responses off the cricket emojis. Sure. You know. Well, hey, I mean, look, you can lead a horse to water, you can't make a drink. Dennis. so many fighters need to go out. They need to get their name out. They come, need to come on great shows like this one that have a big platform, a big audience, but they don't want to do it. And for whatever reason, okay, fair enough. But your placement on the card is going to be directly related to how much media you did. That's just the truth. But it's your career. Do it your way. Right, that's what that's what you've always done. Is every audio or you know any interview you could do, you've always done them. Always do it. Hey, by the way, what do you got in the background there? Is that is that like cereal? What is stacked up? I'm trying to figure that out. It this looks like the, ice cream, but uh, there's no way it's ice by cream. G Fuel. Oh, I see. All right. Yeah, G Fuel got a little caricature, and then the Guinness Book of World Records. Respect for what? I got the fastest time to drink uh, one liter of lemon juice through a straw. Wow, good job. Yeah. And what was that time? We got uh, 22.75 seconds. Wow, good yeah. job. I mean, that, that that's a real accomplishment. I One really wish Doc ran with that. We we marked that and got me more stuff, but I don't know. That's point. cool. I'm glad I asked. Uh, it, it, it's one of the funniest videos involving an MMA fighter that you can watch. So the, the company behind him is G Fuel, one of our sponsors. It's like an energy drink or whatever. It's in the gaming community. They used to be in UFC and whatnot. They put on this lemon juice contest, and now they bought. How big is Furious Pete, Menace? Uh, he's a he's a big YouTube star. I'm talking Furious Pete's got like physically six million YouTube uh, followers or subscribers, and then they brought in two different gamers who had I don't know between the two of them like ten million followers, and it was me and Brittany Palmer. And we did like um, this, um, I don't know, scavenger hunt around New York City. At the end, Furious Pete, he has like 10 Guinness Book World Records. So anything he tells them they're going to do, Guinness Book of World Records shows up. They have the suits on. It's all official. You know, so like, hey, you know, you guys want to be in? I'm like, I'll take a few sips, spit it on the guy next to me. It'd be funny. And then the guy did a countdown. I was like, oh. Here we go. Let's fucking Let's I'm do gonna, it. I'm because there was there was that was there, not with my name on it, but it was in the room. Sure. You know, so I'm like, so I fucking hit it hard. I finish. I lift like a foot, you know, in the, like a solo cup, there's the uh, that little like rim in the bottom. Yep. Yep. That had lemon juice in it. So he's like, sorry, I can't accept this. And I was like, what? So I knew I could do it because I did it that one in 20 seconds. So I'm like, well, he's like, you could retry if you want. I was like, how much time? He's like, I was like, an hour? No. I'm like, fuck. So I went and I, I tried to, I was like, do I throw up? What do I do to try and get ready for the second sure. attempt? So they get, after 20 minutes, I get back up, suck it down in 22 and a half seconds. The, guy, the other guy tried it. He gave up, quits. I got the fucking certificate. Because I'm like, there it is. It's right there. I need that. As a kid... When you saw the Guinness Book of World Records, you're like, oh, I can do one thing in there. Sure. Right? And this was, I was just the right place, right time. And I fucking wasn't going to drop the opportunity. Just like so that, that little rim in the red solo cup cost you 2.5 seconds. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Well, even Menace, I, like I, I was saying, how big is Furious Pete physically? Oh, uh, oh he's got to be like 230. Yeah, he's a big boy. So like when like they a big like a big like bo you know bodybuilding slash competitive eater. Everyone, sure. everyone there was like, "What the fuck? How how did Dennis win? Like, how did Dennis beat you?" And then it was just Menace's professional athlete gameness that was like, "No, I'm winning this. I'm taking that trophy." Mental toughness. All right, guys, I got to switch gears because I want your opinions here. What do you guys make of uh, Henry Cejudo? I I did not think that retirement was sincere, but now he's been stripped and they're moving on. I guess he meant it. Yeah. Here's what I think. I think it's kind of like, you know, when you see Diaz brothers, GSP getting all this attention, they haven't entered the octagon in years. 
I think it's sure. like in that that realm. He could sit back for three years, and he'll always be in the topic of like new champion. But could he beat Henry? And Henry say, "Hey, I mean, you can try, but it's going to cost you five mil." Sure. You know. No, I guess. I mean, there's something to be said for that. Some of those guys, you are right. They they're still very attractive for sponsorships and signings and some other stuff. Life's a little bit easier. I just didn't think he meant it. You know, he said it. Henry just strikes me as a guy. You know. Don't forget about the Olympic championship. Then he's got the two MMA world championships. He just strikes me as the guy that when he leaves, it's not in an empty arena. It's going to be yeah. a sold-out crowd yeah. with tears in his eyes and people patting him on the back. When that's what he deserves, right? He does deserve that standing ovation, even if it's for 10 seconds. But that, his body of work is flat amazing. I just didn't know he meant it. I guess he means it. Well, there's that 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 boxer. What's his, what's it, Rodriguez? Is that his last name, Stan? R Ryan Garcia. Oh, Garcia. Yeah, he was calling I mean, Henry out a little bit. Alex Volkanovsky's calling Henry out a little bit. And then we, I think Henry started that one, though. I think Henry went after Alex first, if I remember that timeline right. Yes, I but... I think Alex was the responder, yeah. Alex has entertained it. They've been going back and forth for a minute. Now, what, what about this... Have on what about this, this mid-card boxer that Dennis didn't even have his name? You just said it, and I don't even know his name. And I follow boxing. I mean, that guy, could he draw flies? Is that a real fight within that community? I, I did not know who he was either, and I'm a big boxing fan. Then I looked at him. He's got like 6 million followers. So, yeah, okay. he must be. I've seen the name before. I've seen the face before. I think he's okay. he's the next in line face of, I think, Mexico. So he's right. he's in the mix. Canelo well, Jr., I would say, right? Something like that. Young guy? 20, 21, young guy? 21, I believe. Yeah, he's young. Okay. He's like 20-0, and 0, 17 knockouts. 21-0, and 0, 17 knockouts, something like that. So he's legit. It could be, but I was saying to Menace last week, it's not going to be Floyd Connor. It's not going to be that yeah. level of money, that level of breaking the internet sure. and media and whatnot, but it would be something. But sure. it's not a good fight for, if they're doing MMA, all day, Henry Cejudo. Oh. It's not a good boxing match for Henry Cejudo. Sure. Maybe they can get on an undercard with Logan Paul. Yeah. <laughs> Logan Paul's good for business, apparently. I, I hear good things about his numbers over there. His well, own. yeah, he was actually training at Alpha Male, I heard. And he's, I think he's actually like a, a state champ. In wrestling. Oh, was he in wrestling? Was I, I think I heard. I don't know about his. He, he was in the state tournament. He might be. He was a good wrestler. That's what I've heard. I don't know about California, state champ. You're right. I think Ohio or Iowa, somewhere in the well, Midwest. Well, all those states are all. You know, if you're if you're placing in that state, you're a good wrestler, or you sure. you can compete. You're an athlete for sure. And then well, I think you know, YouTube took off for him. Funny you use that word, Dennis, because I got to give Paul actually props on that too. You know, he did go out. He, you could see some athleticism, and you could also see some grit. You could see he prepared and took it seriously. I saw that too. People can tease him all they want because they're jealous of the numbers he brought in. I saw a good athlete that was trying to win. I mean, that's what I saw. You ever see the video of him training with uh, Paulo Costa? I didn't see that. Didn't Paulo knock him out? I want to say I read like yeah, that. Yeah, that was, I think, scripted. But yeah, that that's what happened when they were striking. But when they were grappling, he was scrambling with Paulo Costa. Really? Who, who's top I watched him, three I in the world. I watched him do an MMA fight. It was more of like a sparring pace, but uh, with AJ Aga's arm. And AJ won, but AJ had to work. It, it was a lot more effort than I think AJ knew he was going to have to put in. Yeah, he's yeah. a big physical athlete, and I think he yeah. was a solid wrestler. So, yeah, he could translate. Well, he's a bigger dude, right? Yeah. 170 minimum? Yeah. I think so. Uh, he yeah. fought, when, he fought at, when he fought in boxing, he fought at cruiserweight, which is like 190, I believe. Or two yeah, he's a bigger dude. Yeah, so he's a big boy. And if he's strong, fit, you know. And like, I mean, with the money that man's made off YouTube, he can get the best of the best to train him. Sure. I, I th thought you were going to say the best of the best supplements, but um, yeah, either way. Yeah, we're saying the same thing. Yeah, that too. Yeah. That too. I think he had, him and his brother had Shannon Briggs training them. Okay. Yeah. I've heard you oh, speak. Is Mike Tyson fighting? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Uh, you know what? I hope so. I'm actually into it. <laughs> I, I give, I've heard everything Dana said about, you know, these older guys. And I think we learned a lot from Chuck and Tito. And it's it's yeah. not going to be pretty and all of that stuff. 
When Mike Tyson does something, though, I, I watch. I mean, he's put out three training videos that I've seen. The longest one was 11 seconds. One was eight seconds and one was five seconds. I wish it would have been 11 minutes, eight minutes, and five. I was so sad when it was over. I, I There's something about him for me that is compelling. If he's doing something, I'm watching. Yeah. And Because I saw, I saw those same clips, and then I saw Holyfield, like, doing something. I was like, I don't know. Holyfield, don't do it. If right, yeah, don't do it. Do I those agree. Three combinations, they're sleeping. Yes. Evander did not look good. And there's something about these old boxers too, Dennis. I don't know what it is, but every time they shadow box, everything's right here. Like they throw an uppercut from here, but they throw their hook from here and they throw their jab. Like they never extend. And I have no idea why. I always watch them and they're just right. Like Holyfield's running to doing a hook. To do it. Like, you know, Evander, you're going to have to get that arm out there just a little <laughs> bit. And I don't know what that is. I don't even know what kind of observation that is on my part, other than every time I watch those, for some reason, they're just really, they're right. They can't do any more effort than, I don't know if it's a tendon issue, coincidence, I don't know. But that's one takeaway that I have from watching you those two guys. Now, uh, you're saying this, I'm just thinking of this just now. You know how, like, in wrestling, we would extend really far for the high yes. crotches because the leg might be going? It's like, if you hit this as hard as you can, it's going to do that. Sure. You go like this, it's going to do that. So maybe that's what we were fucking up is we were throwing them in this, so we match the fight. It's like Yeah, these guys won world titles. Maybe we're learning something that this is all you need to do in Shadow Box. I don't as know, but I'm just as you can. Guys, that's what they're doing. Yes. Man. I mean Tyson looks good for fifty three, but I don't think he should I mean, uh, do I want to see him do it? Sure. I don't think he should fight Shannon Briggs or someone like that. Like I was yeah, but- I, I was looking at it. Tyson hasn't fought since like two thousand five. Shannon Briggs was fighting like three years ago and winning oh, fights and winning fights. She, Shannon's the same age though, isn't he? I mean, Shannon looks like a Greek God carved out of stone, but I think he's 53 years old too, isn't he? I want to say, I just looked that up. I think they're the same age. No, I think Shannon's a little younger. Okay. And like I Shannon was fighting heavyweights, like not the top of the t- top of the food chain, but he was fighting competent heavyweights three or four years ago. I remember okay. when Tyson was last fighting, he was done, checked out. He was getting beat by the journeyman. Sure. The journeyman were taking what he had and outboxing him. And then he oh, would, yeah. he would find a way out. Like he would like let them lean on him. He would sit down and then all of a sudden go back to the corner end of the round. They'd call the fight in between rounds. You know, that's where Tyson's yeah. career was at that point. And then we got, do we have Sug this weekend? Yes, this weekend, Craig Jones returns. Craig Jones is taking on uh, uh, Wagner Rocha. It's actually a rematch, and Wagner won it. Craig Jones wants to get this one back. Ooh. And I only tell you that, Dennis, I only tell you that because Craig Jones is running through everybody so fast, so easy. He's barely breaking a sweat in there. I feel like I have to compel you to tune in and watch him. The fact that he's taking on somebody who beat him before, I mean, that's meaningful. That, there's not a lot of guys walking this planet that can say they got the best of Craig Jones. Wagner Rocha did. And he's he's a modest dude, too. We had him on the show, and he was, he was like, yeah, best. Ryan, Gordon Ryan messes him, me up. You need him to talk a little bit, right? Like, come on, Craig, I need more. I need, He's a handsome dude. He's got a great story. He's great at his skill sets. Like, Craig, come on. I need a little more. Yeah, we, got, we, got a, we, we squeezed them pretty good. I think we get more of them, though, right, Stan? Yeah, but no, he was great. He was he was one of our one of my favorite guests to be on the show. He actually like um, opened up more than I've seen him in other interviews. Good. I, yeah. I have to go back and watch that. Yeah, he's a talented. I mean, my goodness, he, he's the best. Period. He's the best. That card's loaded though. We got Austin Vanderford. He's taking on uh, Gabriel Checo, and Gabriel just came off a real fat, like a one minute win. Uh, submission went over Jake Ellenberger. And we also have, here's one, Dennis, that I think you will like, but Jake Shields is going to take on former Bellator champion, Brett Primus. And Primus has never entered submission underground, but he is an ace. He's an Eddie Bravo, 10th Planet, Fabiano Scherner, Black Belt, very, very good on the ground. That's a, that's a fun match. Yes. Jake Shields has been competing a lot, right? Yeah, Jake Shields is a handful still. He's just got that iron will. Dennis, have you ever worked out with him? You ever rolled with Jake? I, I haven't. I mean, I went I went boating with him one time and had a couple beers with him, but I never actually grappled with him. Um, he, he, I will say the same thing behind his back that I say about you behind your back, which is this guy is going to try to beat you the entire time. There is no point in this fight where Dennis is going to back down. There is no point you're going to talk Jake Shields out of trying to win. 
And the same could be said for Brett Primus, man. He's just one of those competitors. He's he coming to win. Yeah. Yeah, this is a stacked card here. And even Austin Vanderfort, that guy I think is like one of the sleepers. Like, I'd love to see him in the UFC, but he's in Bellator. I think that guy's a future champion. Last yeah. two fights were against uh, black belts, high level black belts. He tapped them both out. He is a purple belt, just by example, but he just loves to compete. Can't get him to say no, won't turn down an opponent. He wants to take on Craig Jones. I'll yeah. tell you, he is not ready for Craig Jones, and his <clears> coach, <throat> fortunately, will not let him go take on Craig, but that's where his mind is. He That's what he wants. The harder, the better. Bring it on. Win or lose, <laughs> I'm in. Dude, I remember my third time ever training. I went with like a group of upstate guys to another gym, and then the owner of the gym was like, yeah, I'll go with this guy. And I was like, all right. So I'm going with the guy, and he tapped me. I was like, all right. So then I I didn't know ankle lock. I put him in the Ken Shamrock ankle lock. Sure. I was just like tweaking, and uh, I didn't. I didn't get the tap. I think he had, he might have tapped, but I wasn't welcome back again. <laughs> okay, you went a he's, little hard. He was like, "You got this go. guy comes in my gym. He's doing backflips. He's you know, <laughs> like what." <laughs> Years later, he regretted that. Years later, he regretted making that decision, but I get it. Yes. We actually have a funny Austin Vanderfort story, too. Austin Vanderfort is the lost episode of Menace and the Man. What like, happened? We we didn't know. Dan was in charge. Yeah. We didn't know how to work our equipment fully yet. It, <laughs> it, it was like our first traveling show, so the audio wasn't picking up. We had the most amazing interview with Austin. We had Austin open up. We had a cameo from Paige Van Zant. We had, like... So many great stories. And then like 47 minutes in, we go, wait, I don't think it picked up any of the audio. I hit a button. We then get like four minutes with Austin. And now you ever see that meme with, um, I think it's Spice Adams, where he's just shooting shots and missing? Sure. That's been us trying to get Austin back on. Just missed, uh, I missed shots. Oh, you know what? I got to shoot the shots, Dan. I haven't, I've been letting, because hang on, Joe, me and Austin had this like real like organic bromance. It was weird. I'm like, are we friends? Are we you want to come over and sleep over, dude? His lady hops in. We had an awesome time. And then Stan lost it. I almost choked Stan. He, he is the coolest dude to talk to. Like, he has a different outlook on everything. As rough and tumble as he looked and as rough and tumble as this profession he chose, he is the most calmest, nicest. He's a thinker. She get, She's awesome, too. I don't know how well you know. Paige is so fun and bubbly. And she plays a little bit online. You know, she gets everybody working. She is she yeah. is one of the great teammates I have ever had. Paige comes in the room. Even on days she can't train, she's been hurt for a little bit. She never misses practice. She encourages everybody. She's got a smile, a hello, a goodbye. She's the best. Yeah. yeah. We had, like, gold. So I listened to all the interviews. I listened to Chael's show. I listened to Helwani. I listened to everything. We were the first show where they called him Mr. Van Zant. But we didn't. Nice. We, we did not record it. So I was like, "Oh, I can't believe we lost that." We had so no credit. Yeah, no, no credit. credit. We had. Uh, we gotta get him back on. I had the like. So how'd you guys meet? The whole, you know. <laughs> we had Paige. Paige was like, "I was his sugar mama for a little while, you know." But now he's starting to add some money to the bank. Like we had gold. Didn't record it. But we'll get nice. that one back. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get it back for you, champ. No, I hope you do. I hope you do. And, and look, I can understand why he's blowing you off. I mean, right, you work hard and it doesn't get out there. But, uh, yeah, he's great, man. I, I'm glad you guys had a good reaction for him. I'm going to reach out to him after this episode. Well, then we had him. He was coming on another time, but Menace had something, maybe work or something. like a, I think it was maybe when you had that party that time. We canceled the episode. So I was like, all right, Austin, sorry, we're not going to go tonight. And now since then, it's been a game of phone oh, tag. Man. But Chael knows well, how it is. Back. Get him back. Get Paige back in there too. Paige is a great interview. Oh yeah, they were singing Chael's praises too. They were like, "Oh, that." I was like, "What's your relationship with Chael?" He was like, "Oh, that's like my uncle. That's Uncle Chael." That's very sweet. I I really appreciate that they that they said that about me because I I look at it the same way, man. I mean, we got a good team out here. I got to tell you, Dennis, you've probably been mainly part of really good teams, but maybe over the years you you had some teams where just people just weren't getting along. This team out here in Oregon, man, we they get along really well, get some good opportunities too. I think we got five guys signed with Bellator and three through the UFC, so there's opportunities. And that makes a gym exciting, right? When somebody's getting ready for something, now you get to be part of it. And it keeps oh, the motivation high. The best. The best. Some of my best training, some of my own best training camps is when I was already helping somebody get ready for a training camp, and then I was just in shape, and it was like, you want to fight? I'm like, fuck yeah, let's do this. Why not? Hey, by the way, the uh, give me – Give me some scoop. Have you guys talked to Gillespie uh, lately, Gregor? 
He's been fishing. Um, he's got a girlfriend. Nice. Promise. He says, you know, he promises it's not, you know, making him soft. Sure. Um, what we all say. Sure. He's he's the the. I think this quarantine, he's just been upstate in Roch, Rochester, just fishing. I don't think because you know, for him to do private lessons and something, he crushes. He makes probably over six figures in private lessons on Long Island. I've heard that for wrestling, purely wrestling, yeah, just wrestling. wrestling, not even touching then, the MMA. You know, so not being able the- to do that, I didn't think he just like. He isn't like Long Island. Isn't like his like. He doesn't like love it here. It's not really. He likes to like. I don't know. He likes to like I said fish and get on his road bike and go for long trips. Long Island's just the only thing here for him is money and good training partners. You know. Sure. So, so but, but uh, speaking of. But speaking of MMA, do you have any insight, man? Have they called him? Is he called the, the organization? Is he looking to fight? I'm a Gregor fan, is why I asked. Yeah. Is he looking to do something? What's going on here? I I don't. I'm, I'm gonna. I'll ask him. I'll reach out after this episode. But I just think. Did that, that Kevin Lee fight rattle battle. him? Did he get rattled in that fight? Yeah. Did that like throw his confidence or ruin his mm-hmm. motivation? Does that have anything to do with the outcome of that contest? I don't. That th- to be honest to you, like I think the next fight will will tell all. Sure. You know, either he's back to his old ways and you know didn't skip a beat, or you're gonna see this like. Well, that was something eight. me and Dennis have talked about with Gregor. Is we thought maybe the first loss he might be like, all right, I'm good. You know, like which I mean, he hasn't fought yet. Yeah, but I think he's he's talked about oh, it. Wow. Yeah, I've seen him say that he's coming back and whatnot and like go back and forth with fans on social media and shit. So I'm sure he's going to fight again, but I wouldn't have surprised me if cuz he doesn't love fighting. Like this isn't his first love. Like Dennis has said fighting is his side chick. Wrestling was his first love, you know? So he's sure. just doing this to keep competing and whatnot, but um yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if it motivated him. I also wouldn't be surprised if he was like I'm good. I'm done. Sure. But, but Gregor's another one. We shoot shots. The one time we had Gregor on, we actually tricked him. And we just called him. Something me and Dennis do sometimes, we'll just call people while we're on the air. And if they pick up, it's, yep, you're on Medicine the Man. How are you? You know? <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. That's how you get a show off the ground. Guerrilla marketing right there. Oh, the best is we did that to Gre- We did that to Uriah, too. Faber. Faber? Well, yeah. De- Dennis talked to him like, yo, can I get you on? He didn't answer, so then Dennis was like, I'm just going to call him. So he called him, and we almost had like a candid favor. He was like, yeah, you know, that guy's on the sauce. He's taking all those supplements. And then we were like, oh, you're on. He's like, wait, I'm on? Hopefully I didn't say anything. Hopefully I didn't say anything. (laughs) But I mean, Uh, mean, you know how it is. Like, hey, you want to come on? Yep. What time? Five? Then, like, you can't do anything from, like, 4 p.m. on. It's almost like, even though you're going to come on at five, it's like, what can I really do unless you do it wherever you're going to do the interview? You know, that's why, sure. I, that's why sometimes if you just hit me on the fly, and I, uh, yeah, what's up? Boom. Here you know, we go. Been, for some people that works better, you know? So. Yeah. So next up, Chael, we're actually going to play like, what's that? We're going to play like the dating game. What's that thing? Like marriage. We're going to ask marriage questions. We're going to play like, uh, what's the game? Oh, like, did you send her questions? No, but I got questions. So we're just going to put oh. them both on the spot. We're going to play. Wait, who are we talking about? Who's her? What did I miss? We're about to have Felicia Spencer come on the show, and we're going to play oh, like. Okay. We're, we're going to have her and her husband, and we're going to play like, you know, who steals the covers. Her husband fights. Yeah. Okay. Who's, who'd, she mar- who'd she married to? Remind me. His name is Todd Coppinger, I believe. He's like okay. an up and comer. I think they both kind of. Oh, okay. They both kind of started at the same time, but then life got in the way for him, work and whatnot. So she made it to the UFC. He's still fighting. I think he just well, had good it. for him. Yeah, he just good for him. Hey, she can get down. That girl can fight. Yeah, he's just tough as hell. Yes, she actually just said. Ch- I said we're we're finishing up with Chael, and then we're gonna jump to you. She was like, "Wow, Chael's the man." So well, well, tell her I tell her I said what's up. She knows I'm a fan, but uh, yeah, what she went through with Cyborg, she's gonna push Amanda. She is. That, that's gonna be some minutes. No, nobody's getting Felicia out of there in the first round. That 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 I'm confident in telling you. Yeah, she's got a chin. For sure, got to. T- she can take him to the body. She'll get up off the bottom. She's gonna. She's trying to win at all times. Yes, as as they would say for a man. I don't know what you'd say for a woman, but she's a stud. She's a stud. I agree with that. Yeah. So we can ask her what the what the female version of that is. It might be uh, 
studette. Yeah, it might be a stud still. Yeah, stud might apply for both. We'll have to check that. But Uncle yeah, Chael, submission. Oh, oh, I see. Oh, you're rushing me. No, 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 no. You're not getting off with me. I have things to do. I have to go. Goodbye. No. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say Uncle Chael, submission underground this week. Thank you for putting on such an amazing show, but Uncle Chael, I like how he did that to us last time, too. Now, do you think he likes that we're like, all right, hey, Chael, I'll catch you. Like, obviously, you have things to do. Or he's like, motherfucker, I'll get off when I want, you know? Yeah, I guess. Nah, he's just a comedian. He knows what he's doing. I'll ask. I'll make sure. There we go. Felicia Talking Spencer. Oh, the dating game. The dating game. And the dating game. It's Todd, right? Yep, Todd. Todd Coppinger? Yep, Coppinger. Todd Coppinger and Felicia Spencer, welcome back to Menace and the Man. It, it's actually Felicia Coppinger. <laughs> yeah. Is it official? Like you, you, it it is, but, we, just not really but for fighting, we are. I'm just, telling the world that I'm just giving you a hard time. <laughs> I like it. Can it's I see a, the rest of this room? That room looks awesome. Oh. <laughs> it's just... <laughs> We have an awesome wall behind us. It's awesome but, wall. It's, this is our, this is our. Uh... Oh, that's a cool accent wall. Yeah, and then go into the kitchen. But yeah, it's it's just a small room. Yeah, he does it all though. We're, yeah. We're in, in the process. Oh, you're a carpenter. Um, I'm I'm actually a roofer. That's what I specialize in. I do everything, but I don't like doing it everything. Wow, but I, so I like Stan. roofing. Yes, we were just talking to Chael. Chael said he's a handyman as well. That's what you got to be. You know who's not a handyman? Menace. Nah. <laughs> well, like we were talking to Chael. Menace is a coach. So, like, if you're if you're roofing, Menace will be on the ground. Like, that looks great, giving you that, like, you know. You need a water. Yeah. You need a hammer. <laughs> is he one of those smugs, you know, with all the money, just telling you what to do? Yep. Well, no, I'll get you things, like beers, hammers. Beers. You need more siding here. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to get lunch. <laughs> so you guys are in Orlando, right? Yeah. How is uh Orlando? Orlando open Florida opened back up a little bit, right? Like you guys can go to the gym now. Yep. America. <laughs> Good old Florida. Um yeah, it's 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 lifted a little bit. We're still pretty much living living the same. Um luckily I had a couple people I was able to to train with at the gym like privately you know just going into the gym empty and doing our thing and leaving so i'm still not like i'm, I'm kind of like still just staying away from everybody uh, during their normal hours just just so i can say i did everything i could you know if something crazy did happen yes uh, at least i put in my best effort you know to not not show up with a positive test <laughs> yeah. um, oh, florida yeah. is wild right now right Wild house. Yeah, for most people that, that want to make it wild, us, we're like, like she's ruining all the fun because she has a fight coming up. It was like, no, no going out. I was just on the road here, and like, I seemed like Stan right after Memorial Day, like, fucking, a all the roads are packed. A little Traffic's bit. almost back to normal. I'm like, fuck. Well, even Florida was catching a lot of flack because Florida's like the spring break destination. When this whole thing first happened, spring break was still going on, and everyone's seen that yeah. cha the, yeah. the Chad meme. That one kid that was like, I don't give a shit if I get coronavirus. I had this vacation planned for two months. <laughs> right, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, so there, there's definitely a lot of people out and about. But I know, you know, I also know a lot of people who are still staying in a lot. So, um, but yeah, they're, they're definitely out there. The stores are full. The roads are full, you know. And we're in Orlando, so it's a bigger city too. But it's definitely uh, feeling a lot more open, so although we haven't. So yeah, indulged yet. Yeah. I'm like, maybe I'm, after my fight, we'll come back and we'll, you know, we'll have a picnic somewhere. Yeah. I've been <laughs> enjoying that. Oh, oh, go out. It's yeah. good. Send her out. Make her do the shopping. It's all good. <laughs> so now all training couples are different. Are you guys able to train together? Like, are you holding mitts for a Todd? Like, what goes on there? Yeah. You know, what happens is we do a little sparring here and there. And then she ends up fucking me up, breaking me. I didn't do that. Yeah. I didn't and, uh, do that. <laughs> no, no, no. We we roll. We roll. We That's it. Roll. Uh, no more striking. I'm I'm a big I know I can't tell from it. It looks like she's a lot bigger than me. But I'm a I'm a big guy. And um I don't want to hurt her, you know. There's no Let's reason for us to be trained together. I mean me personally, I'm trying to like get some tail layers. I'm like, whoa, good job, babe. You did so good. Ah. <laughs> 
Yeah, but like a situation like not... that, you can give her looks, Todd. You know, you can still give her the look of. Just to yell at me. Yeah. Tell me I'm being lazy. Yeah, I love telling yeah, her she's Stan, lazy. Shit to me. Stan, you, know, it's you all sparred good. with a girl. <laughs> Stan sparred with a girl. She hit him pretty good. So you're like, all right, we're doing this. Like, wow. <laughs> Oh yeah, I'll beat the shit out. I, women are equal in my book. You yeah. can you can make more money than me. You can do anything I can do. I promise you, if you hit me like a man, I'm going to hit you back like a man. Oh yeah, it's like my you're thing even, too. Like I am all about being equality in my life. I will whoop your ass, woman. Don't fuck with me. Yeah, my thing I is spar with them. Menace doesn't spar girls. My thing is man, woman, eight to eighty. You can get it. I'll fight you the same way. 80. I don't I'm give a, a shit. Eight. Don't care. In the crib. Let's go. Yep, pretty much. So, yeah, but we still roll a lot when well we haven't for a long time because of the everything, but uh yeah, we love to to roll, give each other a good roll. What happened to the wrist there, Todd? I don't know how to ride a bike. <laughs> Well, the bicycle. thing is, we have an 80-pound puppy. Yeah, a bicycle. And uh, I was like, no, I'm not riding a bike with an 80-pound puppy. I mean, I'm, I have a fight coming up. I can't risk that. And yeah. uh, he, First off, he, no one was asking her to ride a bike. Well, I was like, I'm not ever going to hold a leash while I ride a bike anymore. I had a bad experience as a kid. I learned. and What happened? You know, I was riding a bike, the mountain bike, actually hers, a purple mountain bike, like a cheap one from years ago. Sorry. <laughs> and... Um, Bike in one hand, dog in the other. I stood up to go faster because he was going faster. Went straight over the fucking handlebars and broke my wrist. Ooh. That just happened. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah then, kind of I had I had flip flops on and sweatpants, and I had my phone like in my waistband and a lighter in my waistband. I was smoking a joint. Like, oh, this is a great <laughs> time, you know. Out with my fucking awesome puppy dog and. Next thing you know, I fucking fall over and Are break my wrist. Are you and Stan's best friends? Yeah. <laughs> and the lighter jabbed me in my gut so I couldn't breathe. Like, I couldn't talk. And someone's like, are you all right? I'm like, I broke my wrist. I'm like leaning over. Like, I think I'm dying on internal bleeding. The one thing I'm pretty good at, like, let's say I get hurt, but it's like not somebody else's fault. It's their fault when I get up. I'm like, you motherfucker. Why would you do that? Like, were you instantly mad at the dog? No, no, he didn't pull on me or nothing. I instantly blamed Fee. I said, her fucking bike. I told her to buy a new fucking bike. <laughs> <It's so laughs> shit bike. I'm like, this is... The chain gave out. Yeah, the chain just slipped. Oh, I know exactly what happened. You went to put the yes. floor for him. Yeah, uh, yeah I went over. Um, oh, but I protected my... You know, it's like, that's what happened. What happened was, when I went over, I didn't want to hit my head, so my hand went up. And and I just did a little shoulder roll. But that yeah. pressure just... Yeah. It's like a chunk of it's broke off and it's broken down it. That happened to me one time and I was in like seventh grade. I was there were some girls ahead and me and my boys were riding bikes. I was like, oh yo, it's Julian, let's go see what's up. And like then it was like a race for us to get over there. I went really hard, chain popped, my foot goes off, I fucking crash, road rash. I got up like nothing happened. But they're like, Dennis, like you're right. I'm like, oh fucking road rash, like yeah, I'm right. No, I'm not okay. <laughs> What are you talking about? I meant to do that. Right, yeah, but crashes are not fun. So I was like, I'm fucking old. I broke. I'm on a bike and I fucking broke my wrist. Like, what What have I become? Do you still own the bike? You're trying to, trying to slide in like a last minute replacement on that UFC card. Uh, yeah, I was going to I was gonna pull some sneaky shit out. Right? I was going to like kick someone down the stairs and be like, look, I can replace him. You know, everything's good. Tape. <laughs> so now oh, I would still do it I'd have no problem but, oh it's not broken yeah no problem so yeah something else that we could point out this is the three timers club for Felicia you're now in the three timers oh. club of Menace and the Man the first oh, time yeah, yeah, right. the, the first time we had you on hanging what out what the fuck are you talking about <laughs> okay three times it's a reference to like Saturday Night Live so in Saturday Night Live yeah. the more you hosted so jacket or like a hat or a uh, or that that's for the four timers we'll club send you something. oh okay yeah that's so i have to send you like a phenom headband first and then i get a shirt <laughs> yeah, yeah pretty much yeah, we, have, love yeah. that. Okay. we have our shirts being processed right now so we'll absolutely send you each cool. one out a menace in the man shirt once we get them <laughs> but uh so the awesome. first time we had felicia on we got to know her a little bit 
AT&T was fucking up for us, so I wound up getting leg kicked because of it. Like, I was the... I was... Todd, oh, I, I was the that. blame, Todd. I didn't do shit. AT&T fucked us up, but I got beat up for it. And then the second time, she told... You guys had just gotten married. So we learned a little bit about that. Yeah, right. And now you got a dog. What kind of dog did you get? He's a King Corso. So he's like a Mastiff. Oh. Yeah. Nice he's looking dog. Boy. Yeah, so a big dog. Yeah, big dog. Yeah, big colors. dog. There's a there's tan or brindle. What'd you get? There there's a actually a whole bunch of colors. Black, uh, right? For him. But yeah, my mine's mine's ours is brindle. Oh, a gray okay. brindle. A gray, it's not really yeah. brown. It's a gray a brindle. brindle. Some people may call it a blue brindle. Um, so that's that's the first kid. That's the first kid, right? Well, I, I already have I had a daughter from uh, my high school days and uh so she's been tagged along for the past yeah. nine and a half years. So oh. at Adeline, which she actually we got her when the COVID started out. I got her from Illinois, so she's been here for this. Yeah. Normally she spends like summer times and you know, as much as possible with anything. But uh yeah, doing homeschool and stuff, it just was worked out better because you know, I'm home all the time, all the time when I'm training, and yeah. I, it worked out that he's not just taking jobs and stuff. Yeah. So her yeah. mom's working full time, and we're like, all right, we'll homeschool her. Like we got two months of Addy, that's cool. That's um, worst decision of my life. <laughs> worst. It's like, <laughs> oh god, no, yeah, she's good. She's, good. she's been to a bunch of my fights, his fights. Like she's kind of grown up. You know, I met her. Uh, when I met her, she was four, yeah, and now four she's nine, doing, yeah. so it's pretty much like yeah, since she was a know, baby. Yeah. So, so that was that's like the first kid, but yeah. now Fluffy's the first kid that we, we can like officially both beat him, <laughs> not really like beat him, but you know, discipline him, and we don't have to have repercussions uh, down the line. But uh, he's seven months old. He's eighty pounds. He's uh, just a big. Where is he? Bring him on. Uh, I don't. I can't he's laying over here. I'll, I'll go snatch him. He's a big. Jackass half the time. Normally, but he's a very like, smart dog. Normally, he, when I'm trying to talk and do an interview, he's like, he oh, you don't, that you don't have to. Like, you don't have to. Just send us a picture uh, later. Okay, good. I didn't want to get him anyways. Like, <laughs> I have a broken <laughs> wrist and he weighs 80 pounds. I was like, I'm going to drag this fat ass over here just for him to start, you know, chewing on shit. So, um, but he's good. are you from Florida, Todd? I was born here. I was born here and, um, my grandmother got sick in Illinois, and my mother left my father. So then we left Florida, and I was raised in Illinois, um, Lincoln, Lincoln, Illinois. I don't even like saying their name because they don't deserve acknowledgement. Um, my family does, but yeah, so I'm from a small town in Illinois, Lincoln, right in the middle. And then I moved back here when I was like 20, 21 years old, came back here. All right. Yeah, and then, and then, yeah, this shit happened. Yeah. Really ruined my Everyone life. Just plans to have fun in Florida. Yeah. <laughs> and you're Canadian, right, Felicia? I am Canadian. I did grow up most of my life in Florida, though. So people usually think I grew up in Canada, but I didn't. <laughs> All right. Secret American. So the flyer. They're selling Canada tough, hard on your face. Oh, they do this shit. Yeah. It is hilarious. Well, you know, it uh, it worked out like. The Canadian fans, like the first, but you know, at the UFC, you, you have to pick, like, are you going to wear the outfit for Canada right. or the U.S.? And I, I was going to alternate, like, I, I wore the American outfit for my first fight, and I, I held the Canadian flag. And then uh, my second fight was in Canada, so I was like, well, I have to hold the Canadian flag. I'm in Canada, yeah. so it's twice in a row that I'm waving around the Canadian flag in the cage. So I was like, I think more people kind of was, you know, Canada got behind me, and they're like, she's Canadian, like. The reception from the Canadians has been awesome. So I'm like, yeah, you know, it's awesome to have pride in being Canadian. And, you know, I'm not trying to hide that I'm American, but like, yeah, I'm a dual citizen. It's awesome. And hopefully, uh, hopefully I can tour the belt around Canada too. <laughs> That'd be dope. That's yeah. The move. Like, we, we still represent yeah. America. Like, yeah. we always got an American flag, you I got, know. I got an on American the right flag. Side. Yeah, I got an American flag now. So I think I'm allowed to sew, sew them together. I didn't know. See, all the guidelines, I was trying to follow the rules. I guess I'm allowed to sew the flags together, so I didn't know that until until it was too late. Oh, last time. do that, yeah. Yeah, yeah I saw this yeah. moment. I remember last time we had you on; it was right after your last win. We were like, "All right, so Amanda Nunes is next. This fight's next." And then the fight got booked. And then when Amanda Nunes yeah. pulled out, I saw you guys both. <laughs> you guys both posted on social media, like, "Yo, don't." Oh, you said to her, "Don't leave Florida." 
Like, stay here. We're going to make this thing happen. So I'm like, all right, that fight's going to happen. Then Amanda Nunes said, no, nah, it's not happening. I need a training camp. I was like, oh, no, tell me this fight's going to fucking not happen. Yeah. So now rescheduled. I, mean, I was pretty confident, yeah. You got a couple. I, had, I guess I had to. <laughs> you got a few more weeks to prepare. Yeah, we got four. It was pushed four weeks, exactly four weeks later than it was originally planned. Um, so it extended my camp. You know, I've been in been in camp the whole time like I never stopped because they told me even when it was even when it was like officially off for a few days it was only off for a few days they're like hey when when stuff gets going like it's all going to come together really quickly so just be ready to not have a lot of notice so I was like okay well I guess I'm still planning on May 9th and then uh and then she needed more time it was kind of um uh, she didn't like give a date but I was like all right well it could be early June I'm like, hopefully it'll be early June, but I'll just have to keep training like I'm in camp. So it's been the longest camp of my life. But luckily, I've been really, you know, I've been really putting being smart at the forefront of everything, like take care of what I need to take care of, like with my body and like recover. And I don't want I didn't want to peak too soon, you know, and like tear my body down training for so long. Um, but yeah, it all worked out great. And now we're what, like 11 days out. and I'm, I'm feeling yeah. awesome. Now, when she ready. said she needed a training camp the whole nine, were you like, you're scared, you're pussy, or were you like, <laughs> all right, you know, you've been a champ, you're a champ for the reason, obviously maybe you need your preparation. What was your... I was, I mean, I was like, I get it, but we kind of like, yeah, I already won the first I'm in the same shoes like, as I was, you. I was I prepared. Yeah, and I mean, if you think postponing it is... I mean, it's just better for me. Like, I was ready to go on May 9th, you know? So all those extra reps I'm doing is just not making it any easier to beat me, so. Okay. Yeah, uh, like. Yeah, for me, I won the first battle already. <laughs> oh, Chelsea. I was pissed off. Yeah, I, I, that. That. I was yeah. super yeah, pissed. Yeah, like, that's done. Like, I mean, I was like, God, but, you know, I, I gotta keep, I gotta keep my, you know, I can't, like, roll into all that emotion and get upset about it. Otherwise, it'll come out, you know? I wasn't trying to, like, roll yeah, her into all that emotion. You're just an emotional guy. She doesn't get emotional <laughs> enough. Like, you should make I a video and talk it. some shit. Well, <laughs> oh, like, yes. Oh, yeah, I get it. Something yeah. menace. You just dark all the shit for her, dude. <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. She's her own woman, you know? It's like, if someone wants to hear what I have to say. Bro, you guys should make a video. We collaborate. You guys should make a video with Todd Hype Man and her in the back. Like Felicia, what do you think of this fight? It's gonna be a good like fight. The key and peel thing yeah. The, yes. Like one of them talking and then Obama. Like no. What he here's here's yeah. exactly. I would need I would need Dave Chappelle next to me to get away with oh, the shit I want to say. Here's exactly what you do. Next time she's talking to her mother, you film her like from her mom's side, so you can only see her face talking, right? And then you lip over, even though it's not what she's saying, you just lip, you just talking a ton of shit. Like, yo, bitch, I'm going to fuck you up. And you can't do, like, that'd be amazing. But it's your voice, not even her voice. Yeah. That, it's like, Only she says that's a good idea. Awesome. But at the same time, I, I like, I like a good laugh. I, and I love go viral, people, But they got to give me a reason for it. You know, it's like. Uh, okay. You know, being a loser, if you lose, I'll give you some shit for that. You know, it's like, yeah. oh yeah, the inter the uh, internet's undefeated, so you got to watch what you say in the same sense. Yeah, yeah, right. exactly, yeah. <laughs> but yes, um, uh, some right. something men has said before too. Chael Sonnen said hello. Big, he said he's a, he said he's a, he said he's, a, he said he's, a, he said he's a big Felicia Spencer fan. Really, he said that. Yes. Shit, he said uh, when you got your ass whooped by Cyborg, that was the greatest fight ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm definitely a big fan of Chill. I don't, I don't think I've ever had the, the honor of speaking with him. But that's awesome. And then we didn't pick the fight or go too into detail, but he said he knows that Amanda's in for a war when that fight happens because you're not getting put away easily, if getting put away at all. Yeah, so. Right. Yeah, I get better as the fight goes on. So. I'm excited for those later rounds if it gets there. And, and uh, if if you two have any insight on what cage they're going to be using at the Apex Center, are they using the smaller cage? Yep. Yeah, I'm seeing reports. Like, I'm Amanda, if you're watching this, this is it. That's it's game over. It's game over. <laughs> Amanda, yes. Um, Amanda too is a counter puncher. She has that stick and move, and she circles. Similar, we were talking about Woodley versus Burns. It's a similar matchup where. Woodley likes to circle the outside and then just fire that big two. That's similar to Amanda Nunez's game. Uh, yeah, I really hope. Yeah, I hope uh, Woodley I think, can I win think that fight. I put in my favor in this fight. So 
I'm just excited to be there. Oh, we gotta yeah, go. I'm not talking to talking to Amanda <laughs> out by any means either. She's a she's a go. I can't wait to get a picture with her. That'll be nice. I want her to find her past. Yep. <laughs> we gotta go Gilbert in that fight. You know what we do here? We would just say in a chair, what we do at Menace and the Man, if you come on the show, we root for you when you fight. Nice. So, so you had Gilbert on? We have Gilbert's a friend of Menace's. Gilbert's a friend of the show, so we're going Gilbert. Woodley uh That's Crick good. Woodley responds to us, I but then crickets us when we ask him to come on, so Mm -hmm. I got Gilbert in the first, Woodley if it's a decision. Yes. That's what I've been saying. You can't just copy my... All right. Go ahead. Shit. I said it first. But yeah, I could I could see Gilbert. A lot of people have been asking me for that pick. I'm like, I hate doing picks. I hate doing fight picks. All right, we, won't, we won't ask you then. But... Uh, Good, they, they don't want yeah, to know. Yeah, yeah. But that's, that's pretty much what I would say. And then we're rooting for Felicia Spencer in this fight as well because the three-timers club, Amanda Nunes is in the O-timers club. <laughs> The Zero Timers Club. <laughs> nice. Yes. Well, yeah, that's awesome. Thank you. So <laughs> real. Hope, uh, be fucked up if you didn't. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no. So real quick, before we let you guys get out of here, how'd you guys meet? Yeah. Yeah. At the jungle. Walked in. In a big old booty laying on the mat. Oh, wow. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, I know, right? It was, oh, shit. And that was a weight class to go to, so it was a whole nother level of booty. Wow. <laughs> And you're like, you want to uh, grapple? No, 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 no. First, I needed a, I kicked her in her titties a few times in oh, kickboxing wow. class. Hang on, that gets their attention. Man, it's like, I wish I could have been doing some speed bag drills. That would have been fun. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, when I when I, I seen her the first time when I walked in the gym, I seen her. I said, oh, you know, there's a cute girl. I like this gym. I want to go here. There's cute girls yeah, I'm going to stay here. <laughs> yeah, and the Kimbo killer, you know, he was he's the owner, so that was pretty cool to me. Seth Petrozelli. Uh, yeah, Petrozelli, yeah. Call him the Kimbo killer. Um, but with all respect to uh, Kimbo Slice, you know. Um, but yeah, we met there. And uh, if I remember, uh, we, we trained a couple times. Uh, well, Felicia, we, got, we already have your side of the story. We want oh, his yeah. guy oh, your side. Yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. See, yeah. oh, yeah. she's a goddamn hog. She's a hog. Everywhere. Um, hey, what we're going to do is we're going to see if they match up. Okay. Oh, let's see if they match up. All right, so didn't really talk to her much. Did like a kickboxing class. Kicked her in her, her hoo-hahs. Apologized. She said, oh, it's fine. Come on, keep on going. She's looking at me like a dumbass. She's like, come on. Come on, let's go, let's go. Right? And I'm like, let's go hit you again in the titties? Or like, keep on going. Oh, there he is. Here's the dog. Love it. Either way, so we keep on. Uh, oh, something I'm trying to spit game at her during classes. She's not having it at all. She has a fight coming up. Her fight ends. I get an ad on Facebook. She's oh. stalking me. Oh, yeah, it was bad. Lots <laughs> to see, little more. I was like, she is a freak. What is going on here? And um, no, no, no. So she, you know, I. Uh, Call her, I am on it. I was like, um, you know, I was like, you stalking me. She's like, no, I just add people that go to the gym, you know, blah, 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 friends. And then I just started like spitting game at her saying, like, you know, do you are eat you, food? Are you, are you going out for dinner? Yeah. Do you eat food? <laughs> I <laughs> tell you must eat, you must eat a lot of food, <laughs> you know? <laughs> no, and uh, I said, uh, I said, oh, or do you have any like dinner plans? She goes, no. I said, how do you not? How do you not have a five star dinner every night, girl? Mm, nah, nah, <laughs> just saying stupid shit, you know. But like, still very respectful. I'm a very, I'm a very. Um, people might think I'm crazy sometimes, but I'm very. I have a lot of nieces, a lot of females in my family. Like, I'm very right. respectful when it comes to the women. Um, but, but like I said, at the same time, I'll still punch them if they punch me. Right. Um, uh, so yeah, I asked her. She'd like to go out and doing lunch because I was going back to Illinois to. To visit for something and she said yeah so we met up at jason's deli and i don't know i guess we just we fucking we talked and yeah yeah any booze or no booze no booze no i think she was she had just got done with the fight yeah she had just got done with the fight that was it but then like the second day it's after training it was after training we went to uh when did you seal the deal when did you were like got her gotcha spaghetti at her house 
Oh, it's you made spaghetti got, at her house? Nah, nah, it's when she got me. Oh. Um, she made me spaghetti. She invited me over for some spaghetti. I'm a sucker for pasta. Um, no, nah, well, either way, yeah, so she had me over for, she said, it was the third day she had me over. She's like, fourth. Sports town oh, Sports Town. Yeah, we got drunk there. Oh, I did the whole man thing. Oh, I touched your light. Oh, I'm a big, strong man. I can take care of you, honey. Yeah. <laughs> Just yeah. a good old stupid yeah. shit. And then, uh, yeah, we had pasta, spaghetti. I made rice, and I didn't know really how to make rice. So she's like, just put a, a cup of rice in. Next thing you know, I have fucking like four pounds of rice. Fucking overflowing. I'm like, I'm gonna jump in the shower. Yeah. You took the rice, and that didn't work out. So yeah, it didn't I work out. It. So just laughed that off, and uh, yeah. so that was it. Yeah, and then I knew I had her when I didn't know I had her. I knew it was something special, and like I said, I I roofed, so got home late one night, drunk, and I was just all drunk. Oh, I love you. I love you. And then when I woke up in the morning, I was like, Oh my god! And she's just like grinning she's like yeah. like you know just me saying i love you and um you know she can well, put you up did. with my i did say i love you you did but drunk. you didn't love her actually it was like time, on the or... fifth date yeah it was uh, no it was on fifth date it was straight so you didn't drunk. love her on the fifth date no he loved um, her but the alcohol oh, made I him say it. it yeah oh. oh i feel i feel so hard i didn't care i you know like <laughs> We, you know, we really clicked. We we clicked really quickly, and we actually moved in together like two months in. The yeah. alcohol blew up your spot, yeah. basically. It was, uh, the alcohol just yeah, yeah, I did. Well, it didn't because I don't like. I said I'm very. I don't like wasting time too because at the same time no, I do have a daughter, so I'm right. like, I want something. You know, I want. I don't want no bimbo and this and that. And it's like you're telling me you go to college, you're a fighter, I said, and look at you. I said no one got you yet. I better get you. Like. I'm going to fuck up if I let this slip by, you know? It's yeah. not every day a, a dummy like me gets to meet a woman like her, so. Oh, wow. So, yeah, so I got it. Stan's going to send you that thing, you know. You can send it to her on your anniversary. What was that? Stan's going to clip that little piece for you. He's going to send it to you. Set you give it to her on your anniversary next year. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, there's our dog, too. But, yeah, that was, um, that was pretty much it. No, no, we, we had been together before, you know, we just recently got married, but we were together so long and we're so on the same page. We're like, we don't need to get married. Like, all right. Government. So we got the first date. We got Todd said, I love you first. Now you guys been married. For no, 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 no. It, it was, it was T flop. That's my, like my drunk, drunk personality. Oh, that's your T-flop alter ego. You yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yeah. What is it? T flop. That's my drunk alter ego. Yeah. Trunk. And then I got the fighting alter ego, the savage cop. I got, I'm, I'm sure I got a lot of problems. He's got a lot of yeah. <laughs> but it's good. It's a good trait to have. And now, so Todd smokes weed. Felicia, do you get down with the devil's lettuce? I, I prefer edibles, you know, when I'm able to do them. But yeah, definitely. She just loves eating. It's like, <laughs> she just loves to eat. She just. Yeah, I, I mean, like, I'm really careful, like, fight time, you know. Yeah. Like right now I can't. Yeah, she's not smoking or nothing right now. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, but post fight, post fight, you're indulging. Yeah. My my yeah. always have she to like eat lots of brownies, but like I really like that my tolerance is so low that I don't need very much. You know? Yeah. We're not, we're I, don't, I don't enjoy being like super high, but I do. I do. Yeah, I enjoy it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It feels good. Could, like, yeah. could, like in the right time. I don't like doing it like in the morning, but like. Depending on what's going on, yeah. I wouldn't say I'm like a pothead, but like, you know, yeah. I could do it all day. All day. Not all day. Especially like children. Yeah, that's how Stan and all that. works. That's the only way he does work. So who yeah, exactly would... work, yeah. You get high and then if something's messed up, you're like, ah, I was high. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> Duh, it's not right. I'm actually one of those like crazy focus potheads. When I smoke, I attack tasks. So I could smoke and then I'm in the zone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no. I was one of those. Couldn't do it. I can't, can't even write my own name when I'm high. <laughs> no, no. All right, I, well, I hate working out. It, it's been a pleasure, Todd. We'll make this a regular thing. We definitely have many more relationship questions that will continue another time. But real quick, the last question we'll ask, who wins arguments? Ooh. Oh. It's 50-50. It, yeah. It's like, like, I'll admit it when I'm wrong. Like, yep, you're right. Yeah, I'm, 
I was wrong. Yeah, on that she one. hates it too. And I, I'm wrong. Yeah. Look, she's like, she doesn't hate it. She fucking hates it. See that? That's a perfect example of it. No, I really make an effort to not be a crazy bitch. Yeah, we're like, <laughs> yeah, we're so cool. That's the thing. It's like, it just works out well when, uh, you know, it always seems so corny when we say it too. It's like, oh, we just don't argue. It's like, oh, well, we do, but like, yeah. That's good like, though. You guys got the balance. You need the balance. Yeah. Yeah, we got a good balance. We never like, put each other down when we're. Arguing. It's about what we're yeah. talking about and nothing else. Like nothing else gets put in when it's not supposed to be put in. And I like holding on to stuff. It's like if you say something, I'm the type of guy I'll always remember it. Like <laughs> ten years down the line, it's like, why the fuck did he hit me in my leg with a bat? It's like, All right. Talk shit about my waffles. Like watch your shit. Well, me and Menace are no relationship gurus, but we're obviously men. We know what's going on. You guys have a great aura about you. So many years of health and happiness. Yes. Oh, there's the dog. Oh, look at him. Oh, yeah, that's a monster. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And what's, the, you, yeah. what's the dog's name? Fluffy. Fluffy? Off of Harry Potter. Fluffy, yeah. I like that. Yeah. i never seen Harry Potter. Oh, dude, I, I swear to God, she's not coming on your shit again until you watch it, all right? Stan will, get, Stan will watch it. <laughs> yeah, good. Someone someone watch it. Have your wife watch it. I'll watch it. Uh, no marriage for me. That's a, that's a death no sentence. No marriage? No, that's a death all sentence right. for have me. You, have your cat watch it? No, I'm, not, I'm a man. I would no. never have a cat. I'm, I'm a dog no, guy, if I'm anything. Not. It's always good to have a pussy laying around. Yes. All right. All right. Thanks for going crazy. Thank yeah, you so right. much for having us on. Thank you guys so much. Right. So, Felicia, good fight June yeah. 6th. Hopefully, you get it done. Thank you. And then let's get you back on after the fight and we'll toss some beers back. Woo! Oh, yeah. That sounds great. Todd, and, uh, it was... I get a t shirt on the fourth time, right? I get your word for yes. that. Yes. Yep. 100%. Okay. And we'll send you some G Fuel. And we'll send, to okay. we'll send Todd some Turp House. What's, What's that? that? It's yeah, our indeed. our CBD THC sponsor, so we'll hook you up. Okay, okay. cool. Yeah, CBD. Yes. <laughs> Todd, it was great <laughs> meeting you. Felicia, always a pleasure. We'll definitely talk to you guys soon. See y'all later. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Dennis. Shake and bake. Shake and bake, baby. Shake and bake. What do you got going on, Menace? I got a roll, dude. I got to go my motorcycle's done what will you have what will you haven't done to your motorcycle it i killed the battery bro i think we should send chael son and some g fuel yeah and we're gonna send chael a menace in the man shirt yeah your boy mike prokop over at crown is making them for us yeah All right. episode what episode 78 menace it was a good time all right i love you stan uh yeah. Oh, I was drinking. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. <laughs> All right. I'll catch you later, big dog. All right, love you too, man. Let's talk to you soon. Oh. See you later.